I'm making this video to get the word out about a process that's guaranteed to clean up the oil spill before our animals end up like this picture. What they're doing now is using buoys and booms. It's like holding up a string trying to keep a hurricane from hitting your house. It's just not going to happen. The oil will go over it, the oil will go under it. The same thing with dispersants. Folks, wake up. Dispersants are toxic. They're just as toxic as the oil that we're trying to hide. It's like putting a paint thinner on a glob of wet paint. It just thins it out. It doesn't get rid of anything. We're allowing BP to just hide how big the problem is by turning it into a thin sheen. There's only one solution that can stop total disaster and it's been proven several times on real oil spills to work. And I have physically talked to several of the companies that provide this particular solution and they are sitting there saying they have warehouses full of product. It's microbes. Microbes physically eat the oil in just days, leaving the water clean and safe for wildlife. And when the microbes get finished with the oil, it dies and it's completely harmless. I'm looking for folks that will actually help me get the word out to the press, to BP, and either the federal or state governments down there. Watch this video, and my contact information is at the end. Get in touch with me, and I will talk to anybody that will listen, and we'll get this mess cleaned up in six weeks, not five or six years. Most Texans remember these news photographs of the megaboard burning out of control in the Gulf of Mexico, releasing 4.6 million gallons of toxic crude oil. What you may not remember is a smaller story, the first open sea application of oil-eating microbes to help clean up the mess. Microbes with a natural appetite for oil live everywhere in the environment. They're nature's recycling units, capable of eating toxic oil and digesting it into byproducts, which are then safely consumed by marine life. Researchers have collected microbes from all over the world and mixed them together in combinations which will address nearly all toxins in oil pollution. They're grown in a catalytic solution to reproduce quickly until trillions are available to be packaged, stored in a powder form, and applied when needed to help clean up sensitive environmental areas. Microbe research attracted the attention of Texas Land Commissioner Gary Morrow, who for years had been the state's strongest proponent for clean beaches. The Texas General Land Office funded a test of the microbes in the fall of 1989 to learn more about them. The test is designed to show the efficiency of using a biological process to remove uh, oil from the environment, especially oil that's on the surface of the sea. First, oil was released into a controlled pond. Next, microbes in a powder form were scattered over the top of the oil with an ordinary flour sifter. Within minutes, the oil slick began to disappear as the microbes did their work, releasing byproducts which are safely edible by marine life. Shrimp, which had been placed in the control tank, began to rise to the top and nibble on the microbe byproduct as it slowly sank to the bottom. Once the oil had been consumed, the microbes began to die off due to lack of a food supply. The microbe level in the ponds quickly returned to normal. Water samples were taken for analysis by Lower Colorado River Authority experts and later reported to be non-toxic and effective. Then the Megaborg, loaded with 38 million gallons of crude oil, caught fire. For several days, it burned out of control in the open Gulf of Mexico. Commissioner Morrow and the land office pushed for and finally won the right to use this potential disaster for the first open sea testing of the oil-eating microbes. The powdered microbes are mixed with water, then applied using standard firefighting equipment. Cost is about one-tenth of the price of current spill response techniques. Later in Houston, Commissioner Morrow and Texas Water Commissioner Buck Wynn announced the results. If you can believe your eyes, we had a great success. And if you can believe the scientific results of our small-scale application test, 
we're on the verge of a major breakthrough. We have absolutely no evidence that there are any harmful side effects from these microbes. It's time for us involved in oil spill response to put bioremediation at the center, at the center of our oil spill contingency plans. And when you look at the tools we presently have to work with, booms, skimmers, dispersants, and absorbents, bioremediation stands out above all of them. Because these naturally occurring microorganisms appear to degrade significant quantities of oil in a startlingly short period of time, and because we have yet to identify any harmful side effects from the products used, I am persuaded that this technology can be developed and used as a valuable weapon in our arsenal to deal with future oil spills. Little did the two officials know that in about two weeks they'd have to make good on their promise. A barge filled with heavy crude was struck by a ship and began leaking its contents into Galveston Bay. This time it was not the open beaches that were threatened, but the sensitive marshes and breeding grounds of many aquatic birds and other marine life. As oil flowed into the marshy areas, cleanup was begun, but workers quickly found standard skimmers, booms, and sorbent materials hardly worked at all. And just walking through the wetlands can harm the grasses almost as much as the toxic oil. Dispersants could not be used because they also were toxic to both wildlife and plants. Application of microbes was again authorized, this time in marked zones, so specific conclusions could be drawn about their effectiveness. Microbes were sprayed with hoses from boats offshore, minimizing trampling of the marsh grasses. Just six weeks later, the results were evident. In areas where bioremediation was used, grasses flourished and the mud banks had returned to normal. Small living creatures returned to the area. All signs of shoreline discoloration had disappeared. In those areas left untreated, marsh grass was brown and dead and wildlife absent or endangered. At a bioremediation symposium at Lamar University, Commissioner Morrow commented on the results. I hope today's symposium puts all Texas movers and receivers of oil on notice that at least the General Land Office, which manages the four million acres of submerged lands, expects bioremediation to be part of any oil spill contingency plan they have. 